Welcome. Welcome to those here in the sanctuary. Please shut off your phone. Those on Zoom and Facebook, hello, hello, hello. We're so grateful you're with us, and we're going to meditate. So we're going to just anchor into God is the love that I am, and when your mind wanders, and it shall, bring it right back. God is the love that I am. All right. Breathe in.
Ah, what a blessing. What a blessing to know that God is the love that I am. Welcome to our Wednesday evening service. Welcome on Facebook and Zoom. And let's chant. God is in Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Darius. Let's pray. Just taking that holy breath and remembering that that is the breath of God, that right where we are, God is. God is living in, through, and as each and every one of us. We are in perfect alignment. Our heart, our mind, our soul, our spiritual and astral being is in perfect alignment, one with the one. We can never be separate. So from this place of perfection, perfect oneness, we are celebrating tonight. Something wonderful is happening. What needs to be heard is heard. What needs to be lifted is lifted. What needs to be healed is healed tonight because we are in agreement we are in the united consciousness of God, knowing all is unfolding perfectly and beautifully. I bless our beloved sister, Reverend Sydney. She is open and available to bring us a word that lights us on fire. I bless our tech staff, each and every one of them. Adam and Doreen and Blair and Nikki are absolutely open and available for God to move through them so that we have magnificence and ease in this service. I bless our music ministry, Sam and Darius. Something wonderful is happening because we are here in the collective good. We are here in the collective knowingness of God. Amen, amen, amen. So I release this word into the law and together we say amen. And let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and deliver us from evil. For, <laughs> for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen, amen. amen, amen. Shorter is better. We go home. I, yeah, later. exactly. She got it. Darius Lux. All right, hello, everybody. Hope you're well. Uh, this is an original song. This is called The Happy Song.
walking so many streets it was cool for a while help me learn how to smile So I do that. So when we, I have to do it in English, I'm like, oh yeah, wait, what's that? That's <laughs> the first time I've ever heard Aramaic being used as an excuse for anything. I, love that. <laughs> I use it all the time, Sam. Happy in the skin. Have you recorded that yet? Yes. Oh my goodness. I so want that. I so want that. That's awesome. That's yeah. really, really great. Next time I speak on a Sunday and you happen to be the music, you know, when we juggle those, please do that. Please have him do that song. And we'll yes. do it with the band. And with the band. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. It's happy in this, with the skin you're in. I, you know, that is something that I think is so powerful about this teaching, is that we, um, we embrace this idea that who you are right here and right now is already acceptable in thy sight, but what happens is how often do we not <laughs> decide that we're acceptable in our own sight, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so anyway, I, I, all of that and so much more I think is what we are gonna discuss tonight. This is the awesome, wonderful, as you've heard, Liz Racy, and she is a fabulous practitioner. And um, so we're, we're changing the format, we're switching it up. She and I are gonna talk about principle and how to use the tools that we teach loosely under the umbrella of the idea of anointed and appointed. And so I think we've also, did we set up a mic, Blair, yet? Yeah. Okay, good, we're gonna use this one. Yeah. Okay, cool, for, for questions in here. And also Zoomers and Facebookers, we are encouraging you to post your questions or comments in the feed and Blair is keeping track of that because we are really wanting a deeper level of engagement. We, you know, I feel like we've all been anonymous and separate from each other for way too long. So uh, we'll see what we can do to mend some of that or build some bridges tonight. So um, before we get into it, you're, I mean, you were, I mean, the, the first time I heard you pray, I just went, oh, she's going to be my practitioner. And believe it or not, <laughs> ministers have practitioners. In fact, Ernest Holmes did, and she was fierce. Okay, so let, let me tell you something. So just so you all know, um, when I started practitioner training at Agape, right. I was, um, you know, mentored by uh, Dr. Beckwith. Um, but uh, when, when in Psalm 1, Science of Mind, the first class, you know, they uh, assigned you a prayer partner. And I got my prayer partner, and we're supposed to pray together mm -hmm. every week. And my prayer partner would call me and say, I'm available at this time, this time, and this time. And I was like, oh, yes. I would call her when she was not available because I was afraid to speak the word. Yep. yep. I was like, 
I can't pray with anyone. I can't, blah, 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 blah. wait, that ain't happening. So I would purposely call her when I knew she was not available, go, praying for you, okay, bye. <laughs> so it is a development, it is a process, yeah. and it, if you are afraid to speak the word right now, that's perfectly fine, because I get that. I have to tell you, I was the same way. Ah, see? We were all the same way. I know. And so when did you graduate from practitioner training? Uh, 2000. I did too. Wait, were you in Agape? I was here, but we had our graduation. This is making way too much noise. Do you think I'd learn? All right. <laughs> um, we had our graduation ceremony there. At Agape? Yeah. Okay, all right. <sighs> see, sisters. See, I knew. I knew. I knew there was like something yeah. happening here. Oh, my goodness. Well, and my prayer partner, when we went through this. Who was um, it? Who was it? Mine was Reverend Jennifer Hadley. Who was yours? Um, oh, there you go. Steven, Stephen Record, who was married to Matt Comp. OK. Yeah. And so Stephen was my prayer partner. And, so, and I was afraid to do that same thing. I was, I was so um, put off by my own voice and hearing and just thinking, what if I do it wrong and, and not used to it? I mean, as time went on, I. I I got used to that sound of my own voice and doing, I would do treatments and prayers in my car because I was spending <laughs> so much time. I just figured the freeways of LA are my ministry. <laughs> and so I'd be listening to KNX FM and I'd hear about a, a traffic accident. And so I'd immediately go into prayer, not with my eyes open, and I'd start speaking the word for right action and knowing that any emergency people who showed up were aligned in the intention for wholeness and support and healing and, and all of that. But so Stephen was, I guess he probably still is, he lives in the desert now, um, a real estate agent. And one day, the, in second year, we were praying. Um, and, he, and I said, well, what is your request? He said, you know, I'm really not enjoying working with the guy that I'm working with. I'm not, I, I wanna work for myself. I don't wanna have to go into his office. I don't like the way he's doing things. I'm ready to work independently. And I really, I'd like to see, I don't know how that's gonna happen, but I know that, that I just have to speak my word. God does the how. I say the what, God does the how. So I did this really, really powerful prayer and I talked about how you know, you hear this in Science of Mind, the fire from heaven, which right. is the passion and the inspiration. I talked about how he was not only living outside the box, but, the, you know, burning the box he was in. And he called me the next day, and he said, well, I get to work from home now. The office burned down. Oh. <laughs> so for the rest of practitioner training, they called me the torch. <laughs> Um, I think I'm making noises with my mic. Am I, Adam? Do I need to rearrange it? It sounds good. Okay, cool. All right, let me know if it gets weird. Um, I'm weird, but it's good. You know, it's, um, it's so good that you're here. Thank you. Tell me more about your journey. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, for many years, um, my husband and I, we didn't belong to any church, mm -hmm. and our Sundays were we'd get stoned and then have some sex. Thank you very much. And that was our regular Sunday. And um, even as lovely as that was, we got bored it's with a, it. It's a form of worship. It's a form of worship. Um, but we, you know, we were like, we were looking for something deeper, something deeper. So we started going to different churches. We went to 12 churches in 12 weeks. And each one of them were like, hmm. No. No. Mm, okay. Too huggy. Mm, no. What, 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 you know, just no, 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 no. And then a friend of ours said, um, you know, uh, I go to this church called Agape, and they need sign language interpreters because they have the same person signing all the time, and she needs a break. Would you guys want to check it out? So we went to Agape and uh, listened to Reverend Michael, and here's this little guy jumping up and down on stage, screaming at the top of his lungs. And I'm like, I have no idea what he's saying, but I'm coming back. And we get, just kept coming back and coming back and coming back, and the teaching started to make sense to us. The teaching. And uh, interesting enough, before this, while we were going church hopping and going, no, 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 um, we went to San Francisco for a weekend and we were in this little tiny bookstore and there was um, a book called Science of Mind. And I went, Science of Mind, what is that? I'm curious. So I bought that book, really old book. It was signed by Ernest Holmes. Wow. Yeah. I know. I'm like, I guess I need to read this. And I started reading it. And, and again, 
made no sense, made no sense, but um, you know, just constant reading, and then started the classes. The classes are very important. You know, you guys, you know, you don't need to be a practitioner or have that goal or anything, but to take a foundation class, mm -hmm. seriously, to take a foundation class will teach you how to pray, will teach you the basic principles just to do that, and that's what we needed. And I, honestly, <laughs> When my husband and I started going uh, to the foundation class, we only were going because we were doing the sign language at the church. And um, uh, Michael said, uh, you know, you guys, if you're going to run this, this ministry, this deaf ministry, and I want you to run it, you have to take the foundation class. And we're like, eh, well, nah, I'm not interested. Well, you have to. So a few months went by, and he came up to us. He goes, are you taking the foundation class or what? So we're like, okay, so we start going to the foundation class, and this is us in the back row. We have to be here. I have to be here. I'm not I paid to be here, but I have here. to be here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, week after week, it, start, it started to sink in. I started to have an understanding, and the understanding was really the oneness. We are not separate. Mm -hmm. And we have constantly, or I do, I, I'll talk to me, uh, Liz constantly has thoughts of separation, and I have to catch them and go, wait, I'm one with the one. I am one. All that God is, we are. That, that realization was mind-blowing. Wait, the creator, we were made in the image and likeness of God. What is God? God is a creator. We were all made in that image and likeness. We are creators. It doesn't matter. Are you creating music? Are you creating song? Are you creating dance? Are you creating how to solve an issue? Are you creating, you know, uh, how to build something? What? We're all creators. We were made in that image and likeness. And when I started to understand that, I went, oh, my gosh, I'm unlimited. I can't believe it. But that, that's yeah. the truth. Yeah, so I get it. It was that just that journey of first going, mm, y'all can shut up, to, oh my God, I'm one. I am one. You are one. We are, we are one. There is nothing separating any one of us. And that means that all the power, all the goodness, all the creativity, all your heart's desire is happening right now because we're in the united consciousness of God. Yeah. Holy cow, what is going on? That's, I love that. Um, we're already there, mm -hmm. and that's what we don't get. And that's what we get to get when we get into this teaching. And I, so I grew up in this. You grew up in this. See, I didn't. I didn't at all. So when I started to learn it, I was like, yeah. what are you talking but about? I, you grew up. But I learned it in a new way, actually, when I started um, studying with Dr. Mark. I mean, I'd had other teachers and other ministers, and I came here because I was at the Glendale Church, and my minister died suddenly. You know, that's not allowed. <laughs> she broke the rules, and she died, and I was really pissed um. that she had done that. But I needed a teacher, and she was a mystic. I mean, she was just brilliant, brilliant, wonderful mystic. And I still hear in my head stuff that she taught and her words, and they still come out in my my talks and my writings all the time. Um, so wait, I'm curious. How was that as a young girl growing up in this teaching? Because I didn't. I'm sure most of us didn't. Growing up in this teaching, did, did you know at eight, nine, did you know you were one with the one and you were the creator of your life? I knew that um, life wasn't as sucky as I thought it was. <laughs> so even with the teaching, because, you know, you go through angst. And I mean, we were probably, I was probably nine or ten when we started going. And my parents had separated, and you know, life was tough. We moved three times in my fourth grade year, and that was just brutal. Um, but having something that told me I was okay, and that life was okay, and that I could do something about my life, I, I grasped that right away. Wow. Now, adolescence, like most people's adolescence, was rough, but I still knew that there was something greater, something greater, something greater. And every time I would like move into this realm of separation, because you know that's what we do, especially as teenagers, you know, and then we go to college, 
I would be, I would fill this pull to come back, pull to come back, pull to come back. And I can remember at three in the morning calling various dial up prayer lines <laughs> <laughs> because I really needed a sense of peace and, and the teaching. I needed the teaching. Um, so what I remember from an early, early age was if we could only heal our thoughts of duality, everything else would follow. If we could move from that idea that there's, that there's two, not one, then we would, our lives would absolutely shift and change and just be incredibly transformed. And so everything that you're talking about is exactly what I was looking at, this idea of anointed and appointed, um, which is a rhyme actually that I got from Michael in one of his talks. I thought, that's a title, that's a talk. So I immediately wrote it down. And I was looking at this, Anoint means to consecrate or to make sacred. We are already consecrated. We are already sacred. We already have the job. We've already been assigned this. And appointed in the Bible means to be put, to put in, off, in an office in order to function fully and to accomplish a task. We've been put into this divine assignment. And our assignment is to live loudly, to live full. And whatever the gifts are that we have, Whatever we wanted, and there are no wrong answers. It's not like, oh no, I was on the wrong path, I blew it, darn. No, it's the path leads you where it leads you, and it might lead you to this greater experience over here, or this one over there, or this one over there. And, and it's all exactly, you can't make a mistake, because the universe will always say yes, and will always covenant with you, whether we covenant with the universe, to be in agreement. Exactly. It is that agreement. So, Blair, let me ask you, do we have any comments online from anyone or any questions real quick? Well, let me editorialize a little bit. Um, I often hear in, in talking about science of mind, duality. Yeah. Can both of you expand, expand on that just a little bit more of what you mean by that? Sure, go ahead. Oh, it's so, it's so um, I mean, we live with this all the time, that I'm separate from God, that my good is there, mm -hmm. not here. My strength is there, not here. And th it's a constant uh, practice. That's, that's what we practice. That's what we meditate and pray. Because we practice to surrender that idea of separation. I'm sorry. Every now and then I can't help but sign. Separation. Separation. We are not separate from God. God loved itself so much, it loved each of us into existence. And so I, our constant practice is to understand God's right here. When you have a thought, it's God thinking through you. And we have to, we have to understand our egoic thought versus our God thought. Most of our thoughts are God thoughts, and then our ego goes, oh, that can't be. Uh, I'm hearing I should do this. Oh, that can't be, because my ego is in charge. So what we need to do is practice, practice, practice to end that separation, understanding that God is truly right here. Everything you need is right here. And, but, but our humanness wants to go, no, my good job is over there with that person. No, no person is your good job. No, my, my wealth is over here with this particular thing. No, no, nothing is your wealth but God. We have to constantly go back to God is my wealth, God is my source, God is my supply, God is my peace, God is my love, God is my perfect relationship, God is my all in all. It's a practice. Well, and just what she said, just what you said, um, it, it, it just kind of hit me that we have this idea of our good being outside of ourselves, which mirrors the idea that God is outside of us. And, and I hadn't thought about it in those terms till I heard you say, because we have, we have this, we, so many of us were raised with this idea of a God up here, um, you know, beyond, beyond the Klieg lights, above the roof, somewhere in the clouds, and depending on, on what your path was or what the, the faith studies were that your family engaged in or didn't because sometimes our families, my family didn't have a lot of um, faith going on, but depending on what it was, you're, and, and I get this from um, Esther Nicholson, whom I know you know. Um, so Esther is a wonderful singer and teacher 
And she, the way she describes it we, is we all seem to think that it's this God who is this um, moody, capricious, old white guy up in the clouds who has anger issues, who has fallen off his meds. <laughs> and that's not the God that we teach, because we don't teach a God of personality. That's a God of personality. And many of us grew up with the idea of, you know, um, um, what was the show, TV show, Mod? God will get you for that. God will get you. No, no. That's not how this works. And God isn't just sitting up there with a score pad and a, and a, a, a stick so he can, like, beat you over the head and say, you blew it, ha ha, that's three for you, one for me, or, you know, whatever. This, he's not keeping score. And I don't even go to a God of he. Now, many people go to a he or a she. I'm more comfortable with an it. God doesn't care because we teach a God of presence, infinite energetic presence that is loving, that can only respond and reflect according to what we, we are thinking. In fact, uh, Emma Curtis Hopkins, I wrote this down earlier. I am my own understanding of God. I am my own understanding of God. And Richard Rohr wrote, my image of God creates me. So when we have a belief that God is out here separate and punishing and judging, then that's the way life will respond to us. But if we think that God is love and present and available, that's how life responds. Yeah, Blair. Okay, thanks for that. I, I always like hearing the, the I, I loved hearing both of you say it. I've heard this a hundred times probably, but it's also nice to hear two different people say mm -hmm. it at the same time. You know, for me it's that I I am that that I am. Yeah. You know, I am God. Yeah. You know, it doesn't it's not separate from myself. Right. Um, okay, so we've got two questions on here. Um, uh, and I, I want the question to go to both of you because again I like hearing the two different yeah. standpoints. Um, what demonstration do you most fondly recall and what was the process? Oh, wow. Go ahead. You go. Liz? Yes. <laughs> okay, I've had many, many demonstrations, but the one that sticks most in my mind was um, I was uh, at, on the Agape prayer line. Uh, as a practitioner, you had to sign up and do prayer with people online, on the phone, and it was my turn to do, go on the phone. And um, I transferred the prayer line to my phone, and I sat down, I laid down on the floor, tried to like meditate. I mean, this is what I would kind of do. I would kind of go, I'm praying for everybody right now so nobody needs to call me. <laughs> right, everybody's healed already, so nobody needs to call me. <laughs> I know, bad practitioner. Uh, so, <laughs> so anyway. God will get you for I that. I know, God will get me. <laughs> so I'm laying on the floor, and um, I started to feel a, a pain in my heart, and it, and it grew, and it grew, and it grew, and I thought, oh my God, I'm having a heart attack. I can't believe this. And then I lost my arm, and I went blind. So I'm laying on the floor, I'm blind, my heart's beating like I'm having a heart attack, I've lost half my body, and the, the prayer line calls, the phone calls. I'm like, what? I think I'm dying? Agape prayer ministry. And the woman on the other end of the line says, my heart is breaking. My heart, I can't believe, my husband walked out of me. My heart is breaking. I'm dying. I don't know what to do. I'm not going to live till tomorrow. My heart is breaking. And I, as the practitioner that I am, said, shut up. That's all I need to do in the moment. I said, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray. Because my heart was breaking. My heart was exploding. And her heart was exploding emotionally. So we went through a prayer. I don't even know what the prayer was, but we went through a prayer. And when we were done, I had no pain. I still couldn't move my arm, but I had no pain. I'm like, OK, I'm not dying tonight. Yay, right on. And, and the woman was also, she felt a peace in her heart. And you know, I hung up. and. Um, my husband was out working, and when he came home, he said, what happened? What happened? I said, how do you know something happened? I still couldn't move my arm. He, I said, he said, there's a blue glow around the house. I went, what? There's a blue glow around the house. What has happened? And I said, I told him what had happened. And you know, at, at the time, I should have gone to the hospital, but I was just like, I just want to stay here. We went to the hospital the next day. I had had a stroke. 
And that's why I could, and it took me six weeks to get my arm back to normal. But I had had a stroke. But in the moment of having a stroke, I was forced to pray. And in that prayer, I was healed, she was healed, all was healed. So that was a, for me, I, I, when all this was over, I was like, damn, that God is good. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the most powerful stories that I remember are always the ones of the healings. You know, it's one thing that we get the demonstration, the, the God riding in on the white horse to save us from, from the debt that we have or, or the relationship that's gone south. Um, but what I remember in the most powerful demonstration, and this was when I was probably 13 or 14, and my best girlfriend, her mom had been diagnosed with a tumor the size of a grapefruit, a uterine tumor. And the, this was how many years ago? And so at that point, it wasn't known or believed that something like that could be, come, that you could come back from or you could recover from. And so my girlfriend, you know, her, her thought was, and the whole family's thought was that, and, and they're Persian, um, and her mom, whose name was Fru, said, you know, well, I'm going to die. And all I could imagine was being my friend, whose name is Nettie, and um, growing up without a mom. And it just broke my heart. Mm. And so I remember lying in bed that night. And I had, I, I mean, I'd, I'd only done um, prayer along with the minister at church. I grew up in the Newport Beach Church. And I remember lying there and doing it as I knew she would do it, which they used to teach it in the first person. Um, and so I said to myself, this treatment is for Fru. And I went through all of the steps um, of recognizing the, the universal oneness, power, and presence of God, and the unification of identifying with it. And then you get to that third step of realization of the affirmative part, which Dr. Mark used to call the, um, the goodies, you know, like that's, that's the vending machine part, you know, that's where you say, I, I, I now see myself in a BMW or whatever it is. <laughs> but I, I beheld myself as Fru and being fully, fully healed. From the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, I saw light, I saw wholeness, I saw everything in my own uterus, I saw it all through my entire body, and I just did this over and over and over, and I probably fell asleep in that state, but what I remember was it wasn't very long after that that there were no signs of the tumor. It had completely, completely gone away. And you know, the, the way that we pray for people other people is that we know that we are one. So when I speak my awareness of true of spiritual law about you, it's not that I'm reaching out to you, it's that I am healing that idea within myself, that there might be something wrong. And because we are in one mind, it heals the greater idea of something wrong. And that's what happened because she wasn't supposed to be alive. She's 93 now. And I mean, still vital and alive and, and you know, giving her kids a hard time as it should be. <laughs> right, Greta? <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have any questions from anyone in here? Anything you want to have an answer to? What I'm going to need you to do is, how, what are we going to do? You're going to hold the mic. You are Blair, everybody, the president. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody have a question? Okay, we got one more online if you want. I mm -hmm. think it's a it's a sure. doozy, but um, I think it's good after you've talked about the demonstrations. Yeah. Um, the question is, how can you believe in a God when there's one obstacle course after another and you feel forsaken and betrayed? Betrayed. So I think you can split that up as you want. Um, but because we we are in in our humanness, we are anchored in race consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. So we are believing in the race consciousness that, you know, uh, you go out uh, in the cold with wet hair, you're going to get a cold. That, that race thought that, that is prevalent, like um, things are going to happen bad, they're just going to happen bad, that we just accept that, that war is going to happen, that we accept that. We're in this human race consciousness and say, this is the way it is, instead of stepping out of it, which is the truth, stepping out of that race consciousness and, handle, and ha um, anchoring yourself in the truth. 
God is peace. That means there is peace in the world. Wait, we're not experiencing peace in the world. That's because of the race consciousness that doesn't believe that there can be peace. But I'm going to hold that there is peace. I'm going to hold that there is love. I'm going to hold that there is more than enough for everyone, that every child is fed. I'm going to hold that and not the race consciousness of, well, some people are just born into poverty. No! No one is born into poverty. No one, everyone is born into the perfection of God. And then we let this human race consciousness overtake us, which is why so many people don't believe. There can't be a God. There's war going on. There can't be a God. Children are starving. There can't be a God. People are dying. There can't be a God. God, greatest gift was our free choice, was our choice, our will. God said, I love you so much. You can screw up as much as you want. But we have to step out of that. Step out of that race consciousness and stand in truth. There is a creator that loved itself so much it loved each of you into existence. There is a creator that is only peace. If we all step into that, we will see peace on our earth. If we all step into the love of God and love each other, even though, you know what, you really tick me off, but I'm going to love you anyway. That's what we have to move to. And when we move to that, we will see heaven on earth. Yep. Um, we, in, we, we, we put ourselves into a position of doing our spiritual practice when it's convenient. <laughs> and so therefore we have a God of convenience or we want a God of convenience, which means when something goes south, when mm. something goes bad, then we want that God from up here to reach down and rescue us and to save us. Well, that's the fairy tale God, and that's that capricious, moody one who has fallen off the anger meds again. And that's not the God that we teach. We teach that God of presence that responds and we co-create with. And that's really important. So I was randomly just looking for some quotes that might help source me tonight. And this is one of Ernest Holmes. Um, we are beneficiaries of the universal, or if we wish to state it another way, sons of God, daughters of God, children of God. And that sustaining infinite, that originating cause, that divine intelligence, which has brought us to this point, is to be trusted. But we must learn how to make our thought receptive to it. Thus shall we learn to take part in creating our own destiny, to rejoice in the accomplishment already made, and to look forward to a future bright with hope, filled with limitless possibilities, animated by divine purposes, coordinated by a sustaining unity, illumined by an eternal presence of intelligence, wisdom, and right action. Absolutely. You know what? I love that. I love that. And, and, it, and it brings to mind to me, you know, um, Every day, and I, I kid you not, um, several times a day, mm -hmm. I, I pray for peace in the world. I pray for the children and families of the Ukraine. And I realized that I was praying from a place of fear. Yeah. So I was praying wrong. There is wrong and right. And when you pray from a place of it is done, knowing it is done, and I realized, oh my God, I'm praying, I'm not going, please, my, my prayer was, you know, the spiritual mind treatment, affirmative prayer, but my emotionality was one of, oh my God, this is horrible, this is horrible. And as soon as I realized that, I could shift how I was praying and pray from, like when I prayed for my husband to have his careers take off, which did, thank you God, but when I was praying for that, I was praying from a place of joy. I was like, I was excited. Something wonderful is happening. Something wonderful. I can't, oh my gosh, I can't wait. Something wonderful is happening. It's so exciting. I have not been praying from, for Ukraine In that from that energy. place. Yeah, yeah. And that's where, that's where we have to do all our prayer work, right there. It's a mental equivalent, yes. and I'm going to be teaching a class on that starting probably in late June. Excellent. Yeah, and it's all about holding that mental equivalent, that emotional commitment and and being at residence with, with whatever that thing is that you want to see happen as if it has happened. Yes. And it's really powerful. Um, back to Emma Curtis Hopkins. And by the way, Dr. Mark will be teaching an Emma Curtis Hopkins class. He's going to start announcing it on Saturday, Sunday rather, sorry. Um, and Emma is what we call, she was the one that we call the teacher of teachers. 
And she's the one whose quote I read earlier of my understanding of God creates me, or whatever it was. I am, I am my understanding of God, yeah. And so these principles, that's exactly what you were just saying is exactly right, that when we pray from our fear, it, it's not that it's a bad prayer, it's just a diluted prayer, and it doesn't convince us. But we, when we can pray from that sense of knowing of, well, what would it feel like if? And that's where we go, and it's okay, because our imagination, this is what Neville Goddard says, is our closest connection and our closest knowing of the experience of God. Our imagination, it's the creative essence within us. It is that Christ center, that Christ light. Our imagination. So use your imagination. Imagine health. Imagine abundance. Imagine peace. Imagine horns blowing and, and lights flashing and fireworks as everybody is saying, peace in Ukraine, peace in Russia. That's where we go. That's where we go. And, and if you have not read The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard, mm -hmm. you got to. It's a simple book. Yeah. Don't you love it? I love Goddard. I love so it. Yeah. Well, the and Power of Awareness, because it's just that. When yeah. you go to sleep at night, what are you going to sleep with? Are you going to sleep at night and you lay down and you go, oh my God, I'm so worried about this and there's not mm -hmm. enough money and how am I going to deal with this in the morning and this person at work? And Are you going to sleep with that? <laughs> or are you going to sleep with something wonderful is happening? Oh my goodness, something, I, yeah. I don't have to figure it out. Yeah. You don't have to itemize it. You don't have to name it. You just have to know something, isn't it marvelous? This is what uh, he would say. Isn't it marvelous? Something wonderful is happening. Isn't it marvelous? Something wonderful is happening. And go to sleep with that thought, regardless of what's going on. I'm going to be homeless tomorrow, regardless of what's going on. Isn't it wonderful? Something marvelous is happening. Sleep with that. Yeah. And you will wake with something wonderful happening. I love this. The quote that I read to you earlier, it's from a book of Ernest Holmes called um, Live Without Fear. Mm -hmm. And so that's what that is, is when we can, and sometimes what really gets us there is a sense of gratitude. So yeah, I might be homeless tomorrow, but I'm going to be grateful right here and right now. And, and maybe all that we can do is go, I'm grateful. I have enough air to breathe. I have a blanket on me now. I have shoes that fit. I have people that love me. I have, I have friends. My hair is growing by itself without me telling it to. My fingernails know how to do this. My food knows how to digest. My heart is beating without me I'm telling it how to do it. I'm grateful now for all of this, all of this, because it is already so. And gratitude does not require a specificity. It, it requires the feeling. Gratitude doesn't require a specific target. It just requires the feeling. So if there's terror and fear over here, but you've got something over here that there's deep gratitude and love and joy and celebration about, go here. Don't go over here. Go here. Get them closer together. Get them closer together. Surround this. Even if you can't put your mind into it, just know that that gratitude is still fully present in and around it. I think we're probably almost at the end. Are we... Are we over time? I was enjoying it so much I didn't notice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to read one thing if we're closing. Oh, God, please. Right. Yeah, yeah. Use um, this as our closing yes. prayer. Yeah. Um, our spiritual resources, Joel Ed S. Goldsmith. Oh, yeah. Ernest Holmes, Joel Goldsmith, Neville. Mm. So many wonderful um, teachers that we have here. Um, because we're talking about prayer, how to bring into our life what we want. And what he says is, Students frequently say, I haven't en enough understanding to heal. And I usually reply, I haven't either. But I have seen a good many healings take place. It is not your understanding that will ever heal anyone. Lean not unto thy own understanding. Whether you're a practitioner, a teacher, a beginner on the spiritual path, in every case that comes to you, lift your thought to God. Acknowledge God's understanding and grace to be sufficient. Do not see that no person's grace is your sufficiency and no person's understanding can help you. God's understanding, God's understanding alone is your freedom. God's wisdom is your guidance. God's love is your protection. God's presence is the harmony of your being. So with all you're getting, get God. Mm. And in that same consciousness, I invite you to just simply turn inward. 
and know that that which our souls have longed to hear has been heard, that that song, that song of God, that Bhagavad Gita has been singing itself to us all this evening, and it sings through us. And right now we allow and we declare and accept that that song of God is singing itself in total wholeness as peace in Ukraine, as peace for all beings everywhere. It is singing itself through us, as us, and around us as right action and harmony in health. If the need appears to be physical, then that song is singing through in the wholeness and perfection of God as radiant energy, perfect health, absolute wholeness. And if that need appears to be one of finance, I know that that song of God is absolutely right here with the angels chorus singing loudly and clearly, clearly in that absolute perfect idea of supply, support, abundance, all that is needed, all needs met. Because we know that God is all there is, and right where we are, God is, and we say yes to knowing that, yes to being available, yes to being willing, receptive, and to just simply relaxing back on those satin cushions prepared by God and saying, yes, God, peel me a grape, I accept. And God says, thank you, I've been waiting for this opportunity to do just that. So we accept that that is the God that we know. It is that God of loving presence. And we accept that wholeness is now demonstrating throughout this universe, throughout our own lives, as the highest and holy and sacred experience of love. And so I invite you to say with me, as I say this, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Let's say it together. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. So we bless this church. We bless all churches. We bless all synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that there are so many wonderful, magnificent paths because the divine seeks to be revealed on every level right here and right now. So in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, and so it is, and together we say, Amen. Amen. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife With my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for love I release and I let go I let the spirit run my life And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for God struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. So we're going to quickly do our offering. So take your love offerings, your tithes, your gifts. The thought of that, if you are doing it automatically, you're going to drop it in the box back there or call in later and just hold it in your hand, knowing that this hand holds infinity. Hold it to your heart and say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Amen. Go for it.
so triumphant that we rest in God and say Amen. Bless it always, bless it always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say Amen. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say Amen. Rest in God and say Amen. Yes, Darius. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Darius Lux. It's thank yours. Thank you, Mr. Sam. Thank you, everyone. A few announcements here. We make it easy for you to make donations uh, to the church. You can text to the give number um, on the back of your program. We got that QR code. You take a picture of it and bada bing, bada boom. Awesome. Um, you can also go to nhcrs.org to give. And, you know, we encourage you, if you've been spiritually fed tonight, please support the church. But you're not just supporting the church, you're supporting the world because this is a tithing organization. So thank you very much. We have prayer with a practitioner available in service up here when you're done or on Zoom. If you're on Facebook, rotate over to Zoom and you can have your one-minute miracle. Next Wednesday with Reverend Sydney Steen, we have meditation at 6.50 and service at 7. And her topic is equal with God. Hello. Equal with God. If you knew how sacred you already are, you would bow down before your own dazzling image. Nothing and no one can stand in the way of your divine potentiality Accept your own beliefs. So wonderful. I can't wait for that. Lovely. Um, the Love and Kindness Ministry, ministry is um, feeding the homeless this week, this Sunday at 1230, lunch in the park. So please sign up out of the patio tonight um, and support this ministry with Gilda Gomez. Um, we could use donations of food. That would be wonderful any way you can help. And this, money is good. Money is always good, too. Oh, uh, we'll take money. We'll take money. We'll always take some cash. Thank you. Um, this Sunday, 1 p.m., we have climate reality leader, Bess Fanning. Mm -hmm. She's going to be giving a free presentation on the climate crisis, California and solutions, uh, information that's out there in the foyer. And please, please come and support this because there are simple things that we can all do to shift what's going on in our planet. Thank you, beloved I am. So save the date, 2022 Memorial Day Sunday celebration, May 29th, our 1130 service. We're going to have a re-member invite our members to recommit, renew, invite our practitioners to recommit, rewire, install Reverend Sydney Lehman Steen as our assistant minister. Yay! And refire afterwards with a delicious barbecue and party for kids and adults. This is going to be a great weekend. It's going to be a great Sunday. Please come out. Let's celebrate our beloved sister. Thank you very much. We got our Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. A Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday, 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. The best way to start your day. Don't miss it. And visit our website for all things North Hollywood. Uh -huh. NHCRS.org. All things e-blast, information, workshops. Everything is going on. It's magnificent. So go check it out and peace out. Peace out. Okay. I wanted to just thank the people who were involved in the technology tonight. Yes. I think I left my sheet over there. So, oh, there it there is. You go. Thank you. All right. Uh, at home, Gail Pallott is holding vigil. She's our practitioner. And Facebook Live support is from Dean Regan. Zoom support, uh, Alma Alvarez and Diane Satterley. Now, in the sanctuary, lights and sound, Adam. Thank you. Greeter and usher, Deborah Lockett. Our media team in here was Doreen Remo, Brenda Jordan, Nikki Zavara. Was Alex in here too? No, but, but Blair was here. 
Virtually. Oh, well, that's right. And by the way, Darius Lux, iTunes, you can get his music there. L-U-X, go for it. Sam, as always, you're a rock star, man. We, we worship at your altar. We love what you do. Liz Racy, the goddess. The goddess. Thank you very much. I'm Reverend Sydney. I'm so glad that you have all been here. And um, I think it's just time to say amen, amen, amen. Join us for coffee out in the patio. We love you. Go for it. Hey, Darius, let's come up and lead everybody one more time and bless yep. it always. I like it. by God itself. Let's go get coffee. Amen. Amen. Thank or something you. like that. <laughs>